a screen. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to make PowerPoint. Yes. Okay, Kalani, is everything good? Yeah, everything's good. Everything is good. Okay, you can open the doors. Or okay. too early. You want to wait another minute? Yeah, let's just wait another minute. Okay. Okay. Let me just stop my video. Oh, yeah. I'm recording too. Does it show that I'm recording? Can you tell? Uh, oh. wait. Hold up real fast. <laughs> Uh, uh, yep, you're recording. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Because we can always edit it afterwards, but I, I want to make sure we're recording. Okay. Yep. Sports commentating, you know, how you're in a booth and, and we have to be like super close to each other and we're talking about play by play. That's right. what we're going to be right. I'm, I'm wearing my UH, my UH, you know, go Warriors right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's 6.55. Okay, all right. Yep. Okay, so, so, all. Right. Yeah, so doors are open and we are live on social media. So all the channels. Yep. And Facebook and Hawaii New York and all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to um, I'm going to watch it. Make sure that we're on. Uh, it doesn't show us live yet on Hawaii New York. Yeah. Oh, now we are live. Very good. Very good. Okay. Aloha kako. <laughs> I'm Lili Kala. And here we are for another fabulous evening of Polynesian ancestral knowledge. Uh, we're going to hear about stars and things that have to do with the stars in Tahiti with Papa Haifara. But before we do that, and while you folks are coming in, and please, when you come in, put in the chat where you're coming in from. I know that we get lots of folks from uh, the American continent, we've got from California, from Nevada, from Michigan, from uh, East Coast, New York, as well as from different parts of the world in France. But I'd like to have Hiro Nui tell us why this is going to be a very short show this evening. Hiro Nui, please take it away. So I'll speak in English and in French. So I just want to once again uh, um, to say hello to everyone. Yorana. Um, I'm going to be speaking in English and French, and then um, right next to Papa Hepara, this is Papa Hepara, he's our, our guest tonight, and right next to Papa Hepara, we'll have Matahi Tutava, who's going to be translating in French, and I'll be translating in English, so there's going to be three chances, because Papa Hepara is only going to be speak only Tahitian. Tahitian. Yeah. Alors, ce soir, nous avons bien sûr le plaisir d'accueillir Papa Yves, Papa Hepara, et tout doute, qui parlera que en Tahitian ce soir, moi, je fais la traduction en anglais, Et puis Mathieu va nous rejoindre, il va se mettre juste à, à gauche de, de, de Yves pour le traduire en français. Et pendant cette soirée, bien sûr, nous espérons pouvoir vous présenter le plus, que, plus possible parce que nous avons une limite de temps qui est celui de 8h15 parce qu'après, il faut qu'on rentre, on est à Papineau. Et beaucoup d'entre nous qui sommes là, nous habitons en ville et puis bien sûr, nous avons ce qu'on appelle un, un couvre-feu. So I was just explaining that... Um, we have a curfew here in Tahiti, and uh, we are all here located in the district of Papino, which is on the northern side of the island. And most of us, we live in Papete. So we have to finish around 8.15 to make sure that we make it back to our homes um, before curfew. So the program tonight is going to be, we're going to be talking, of course, about Matari'i, um, about ceremonies, and we're going to be singing some songs and showing you some beautiful films. And uh, that's going to be the program for tonight. Alors, comme je disais, le programme de cette soirée, nous allons... Bien sûr, écouter Papa Hifara. Nous allons également visionner des films que nous avons réalisés pour, pour, um, pour également écouter les chants que Papa Hifara et d'autres personnes de l'association Rolou nous avons écrit exactement. Alors, juste à côté de Papa Hifara, c'est um, voilà. Ah, c'est Matei Tutava. So this is Matei Tutava. He's going to be translating for us in French. Voilà. 
Ah, il faudra la traduction du tahitien en français et moi, bien sûr, du, euh, du français bon, en anglais. Okay. So, Matai est en anglais et Matai est en anglais et vous allez le traduire en français. Est-ce que c'est correct? Oui, pour que tout le monde puisse comprendre. C'est fabuleux. Merci beaucoup. So, so c'est fabuleux. Je suis tellement so heureux que vous êtes ici. Folks, you know, uh, for those of you who are on, you've got the right address. You're here already. If you're, if your friends are not making it on uh, on time or whatever, just send them this Zoom link, this Facebook Live, uh, and this is where they can get on. Okay. So I, I want you to know that we're going to head straight into the show, and hopefully people will catch up with us as we go. So I'd like to begin. Aloha, naho, aloha, mona nuiya kea. Mai kapeina kala ma mauna te te ora panuia kana po ana kala ma te tai ore hua o au te aroa aloha aloha to all of our cousins and friends of the Polynesian Triangle from the rising of the sun in the east at mauna te te ora panui until the setting of the sun in the west in the sea of re hua of au te aroa aloha. Bonsoir et bienvenue à tous nos cousins nos amis du Triangle Polynésien. De l'Est, nous avons bien sûr nos amis de, de Manga Teata de Rapanui et à l'Ouest, où le soleil se couche, à la mer de Rihua à Aotearoa. Bonsoir tout le monde, bienvenue. I am Lili Kalang, comme il est Hiva, of Heia O'ahu, your branch chair and host of our weekly Wednesday night Polynesian ancestor webinars. And as usual, I am joined by our most excellent French translator, Johan Hironui Buit of Tahiti Maohinui. And together, We welcome all of our cousins and friends from Hawaii, Tahiti, Aotearoa, Tonga, Samoa, Kukiairangi, Australs, Tuamotu, Marquesas, Rapa Nui, and even from France. Aloha kako. Alors, le docteur Lili Kala, comme elle est Hiva, elle est de l'île de Oahu, dans le district de Heia. Elle est bien sûr la présidente de, de l'école des, um, des études comparatives uh, sur la culture polynésienne. Et tous les soirs, ben, tous les mercredis soirs, euh, depuis maintenant 23 semaines, nous nous accueillons pour ces webinaires. Alors, je m'appelle Johan, je suis le traducteur euh, de non, anglais en français et de français en anglais. Et ce soir, bien sûr, je vais, je vais traduire également. Et je suis de Tahiti, bien sûr, et je vous souhaite tous le bienvenu. Et surtout à tous nos amis et nos amis de, comme elle disait, Hawaii, Tahiti, dans le client. Mais aussi au-delà, nous avons beaucoup de personnes qui nous regardent euh, d'Asie et des Amériques et bien sûr d'Europe. En tout cas, bienvenue à tous. Oui. OK. But before we begin our discussion of Polynesian ancestral knowledge, I would like to thank and honor Gladys Kamapafuo Kavani Brandt, always, for whom our Center for Hawaiian Studies is named. It was her vision and her bequest to the Brandt Fund at the UH Foundation that allows us to support the work of the Brandt Chair for Comparative Polynesian Studies. Tonight, I have a special oli regarding the Makali'i stars to dedicate to Auntie Gladys Brandt, to my mom, Catherine Leilani Lee, and to Papa Hefara, who will tell us tonight about the Tahitian Matari'i Mi'a Pleiades Rising Ceremonies, Songs and Chants. So here is my, my little chant for you. Okay. It's an okay. old one. From the 1800s. So I'm going to translate first. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Voilà. Nous, nous avons bien sûr, avant de notre um, nous allons rendre à Kalani Brandt, um, qui, grâce à elle, nous, uh, nous avons mis en, ils ont mis en place une fondation avec l'Université de Hawaï de mettre en place uh, uh, l'école des études comparatives polynésiennes. Et alors, uh, Lili Kala, le docteur Lili Kala, souhaite bien sûr chanter un oli um, concernant les étoiles de Makali. Elle dédie ça à Auntie Gladys Brandt, mais également à sa, sa maman, Catherine Lelanili, et bien sûr, Papa Hipara, en intervenant ce soir, qui partagera ses connaissances en ce stade. All for you now. Go ahead, Lili. Okay. <laughs> E ola ai ya kono yo kala E ola na li me na ka huna ola ke kula me na kilo E ola ya oi ma kali E ola ya ne luna ya ne la lo Ola i ka ua huna i ka ua lo E ola ya una ya pa pa ina 
Mahalo. And now we would like to represent, uh, we would like to uh, uh, ask uh, Papa Hefara to come and present to us these wonderful Tahitian ceremonies and ancestral knowledge in Tahitian. What a treat for all of us. And for you folks who'd like to know the words of the songs and the translations, that will be shown at the very end because we have to make sure we finish on time. Mm -hmm. En play. Comme le docteur Lelieta disait, on a l'occasion bien sûr d'écouter des, des magnifiques chansons ce soir. Et c'est pour ceux qui souhaitent les paroles de ces chansons, traduites en français et en anglais, um, seront disponibles à la fin de, de la présentation. Parce que nous, avons, nous voulons bien sûr finir le plus tôt possible. Voilà. Et bien sûr, la, la présentation um, de, de Papa Hipara sera en tahitien pour ceux qui nous rejoignent maintenant. OK? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Farifino, of course, um, is the peak in the middle, in the center of the island of Tahiti. And so um, we have this first image to, to make sure people understand that the Haururu Association, nonprofit association, um, is born at the heart of the island of Tahiti. And so this is the first map. Ça, c'est la première carte de Tahiti. Et... <laughs> Et bien sûr, euh, nous voulons mettre en valeur euh, l'association euh, Horuru, mais également, bien sûr, toutes les connaissances que l'association a apportées, on pourrait dire, et que cette première carte nous montre l'île de Tahiti, et plus spécifiquement Tahiti, la, la grande partie de l'île. Et là, au milieu, se trouve le Farifinois, une petite montagne dans le Grand Caldera, qui se trouve au milieu de l'île, où, bien sûr, est née l'association Horuru. OK, next slide. Et voici encore une autre carte qui montre un peu plus en détail um, voilà, les, les rivières qui passent. Et la plus grande rivière, bien sûr, c'est celle qui... Another map, an ancient looking map. It shows, uh, um, I guess you can see the, the geography of the island of Tahiti. And as you can see in the middle, Maruto, that's an area, of course. It's at the base of the highest mountain, in, uh, which is called Orohena. Et nous nous trouvons à Papino uh, ce soir. L'association, bien sûr, a ce qu'on appelle un village par Hapé que nous allons découvrir plus tard. Et que voilà, on vous situe, nous sommes présentement à Papineau. So here, we are all here in Papineau. OK, next slide. Yeah. Et voilà, and now I'm going to let Anko talk. Et voilà, maintenant, je vais laisser la parole à Papa Hifa. Yorana. Maïva. Te yémane nous t'auto et là. E otu u, otu u ua ua. Wa hau te piti ahuru mo tahiti mātou ki te noa rātara otu, otu u i taua wahi noa. Nori e wahin aroa i i te mei otu i tara otu u, e arikwa i oe tātara te goe tio honu a, no te aha tara otu u. Te i te wahi i ona e parohi āra e, o pūraha. Itra wahai muar e muar ino mai e pau dama ina mia mai te vere te mara e paru hiara i viral to maru. Ai tau pro pro dai yo not me a hamata ta to naru to chu e ta ura ho e pure ra naru to chu e himene ka te e mo pra ta mari e himene mai. Donc Yorana, bienvenue à nos amis francophones. Uh, donc ce que vous voyez là c'est une photo donc d'un haut ou. Uh, c'est une espèce de châssis que l'on trouve ici et uh, qui uh, tout à l'heure on l'expliquera plus en détail, euh, qui représente le dieu Tahane. Alors, l'association Haruru, depuis 20 ans, euh, donc, euh, voit assez souvent, régulièrement, euh, ces oiseaux en fond de vallée. Ce sont des oiseaux qui... Sept euh, oiseaux. Sept oiseaux en particulier, oui. Bon. Qui, euh, qui, euh, qui, donc, qui niche autour d'un endroit qui s'appelle Purha et qui n'est pas très loin de, 
demeurait euh, que aura voulu entretien aussi. Euh, mais avant donc, de commencer notre présentation, euh, nous aimerons, euh, nous souhaitons donc, vous offrir un, une chanson, mais aussi surtout une, une prière. On va, on va ouvrir euh, notre mm -hmm. rencontre ce soir avec une prière. OK, so as you see in the image, you see a white bird. It's called an otu in Tahitian. And it, this is a bird representative of the god Tani. And so this is actually taken, this particular picture is taken in a place called Puraha. And of course, next to a mara, which we'll see, uh, called Ibirao to Umaru. And so the last 20 years, this particular bird has been present in many of the ceremonies that um, the, uh, the nonprofit Haururu has been organizing in the valley. So this is a very strong symbol, which we'll get into more details later. And of course, we're going to start our evening presentation with a song, Pehe, dedicated to Tane. So here's the song. Auto. Okay. 
Nuria Mitai Pro Araguanera Tipihono Tatu T. Mara, T. Momanu, Fahu Noi. Te tao to itera, Guapa Pumai, who made that in it Mara Araguan. A fate not te out to a tan, not mea te tata to it, nay te chop erota to it, te Te manu tata to it, te te tomora. Te te fa mara mata mo ta haru e hap on ya. Ta to ite nei te unu e o tan. Wa tu mai ma to ite unu. Mo te mi ta ta to ite ra. Te mo mea to a iro to ite aru. Ai te mo uhipa to e natan e hoa te i mo ro ve da. Trai te te unu ta to ite ra. Ta ma to i uru e te mo ma te ite to. Iro e hi ai te me te i mo oru. Ofa oti haluru tau matiti te nei mana o haluru mape matiti ite mau matiti ato e amau o haluru ite mau nu e fati a ona e pro mato itra itra orwa tuiti la fati a e oti ha ato trai ate pro no te no te mau nu voilà, donc pour résumer un peu, euh, le Hautou donc, que, nous, que nous avions vu représente, euh, c'est un Arere, donc le messager du dieu Tane. Et euh, donc, ce n'est pas un hasard qu'on le retrouve justement dans la vallée de Papino, qui est justement une, une vallée qui était euh, la maison du dieu Tane, qui est la maison du dieu Tane. Euh, donc, depuis 15 ans, à peu près, Haruru a remis en place euh, des cérémonies, la cérémonie notamment du Tuhitir Aounu, donc l'installation de ces Aounu. Euh, une semaine avant le lever des Pléiades, avant Matarinia, donc ça s'est passé à peu près deux semaines. Euh, donc ce Ounou, le Ounou que, que nous voyons actuellement, représente justement le, le dieu Tahane. Ok. So as Papa Hepara was explaining, of course, and since the inception of uh, the Horuru non-profit organization, um, the Valley of Papino, um, the god of the Valley of Papino is Tane. So he mentioned the white bird is a very strong top off sign uh, representation of the god Tani, of course. In the ceremonies that we have in the Valley of Papino, we have what we call the Tuhitira, which is the lifting and um, the placing of the Unu. As you can see in this image, these are wooden sculptures that are placed in different locations near Maraya, near different, um, I guess you could say, cultural and historical sites to, of course, represent um, different deities and, of course, um, uh, animal protectors, and this is something that they decided to put on together. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, this is a representation of Tane. And so he had also mentioned that um, what we're going to come back to, of course, is the first um, Mara or archaeological site that Haururu had taken care of. Um, the name of it is, of course, Ibirao to Umaru. Right? This is the very first one that um, they've been taking care of. And of course, they've been looking and searching to find out what it means. What is the significance or um, who is this Mara dedicated to? And of course, in their research, it's now 20 years, of course, of trying to figure out or, or researching, they maybe have this particular answer to, to the question, of course, um, is it for Tani or, 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 and this is something that we, of course, will be, be seeing right now. So um, Papa wants now to show you the, the video, the film, um, of course, that will um, this particular Mara, which is called Ibirao Tumar. Alors, nous allons maintenant regarder le film, un petit extrait des images de la vallée de Papino, et plus particulièrement uh, le site de Puraha, et bien sûr le Mara de Ibirao Tumar. Ok? Oui.
beautiful. Looks, looks beautiful. Day Maret, he would show what a Day Maret. Not a mumhana and a fapi here might more ahora of Maret. That after Javid at the Patra Ame. Day Maret fighting made on a Maratera not a mutu no hua he name. Not the mutia no hua he made of it. Day Maret. Penny, I know to me, I two tap of a mato iteria pro. The pity you ought to you ought to itra Trahoa, the iterata to a moody may, the ahu, the ahu to more may, the iterata to itra to par apape. The to par apape, afro no name iho, eh? Egu apapa, te papa, emua in yatu. Rate me hora. Ahuru, not me tramo we muri me, a pia tramo we fare menahiot me aramoro, eh? Aramoro, a pity don't I yoga. Yara Yara Mauro, a tare. Aurera Yara Mauro, the tere a tere promo Mauro. E tramana mato chite ae wa fan hot o hia tramare in ia yarahiti o ia ae in ia te mahana ia te amai e tau mahana ki o mato e oru atrata mato e te pe o te vere amare to e e fai te meira e wa apapahi ona in ia yarahiti in ia te 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 yara. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, en yeah, yeah, yeah. Voilà, pour résumer un peu, alors, le marais que nous voyons, uh, Ivira Otomaru, uh, a été re restauré récemment, donc il y a un peu plus d'un mois. On marque d'ose, il a posé comme hypothèse, uh, ce marais uh, aurait des liens avec uh, Huahine, donc c'est un marais qui serait conçu par uh, des gens de Huahine. Uh, et le Ahu, donc l'hôtel de ce marais fait directement euh, derrière le Ahu, il est aligné euh, sur une, une cascade, mais aussi sur euh, la chaîne de montagne euh, à l'arrière, donc euh, qu'on appelle Aramaoro. Alors qu'il y a deux significations, deux, deux possibles significations. Aramaoro qui veut dire se lever tard parce que euh, c'est une chaîne de montagne qui est éclairée par le soleil seulement en fin de journée. Hein, donc elle se trouve euh, du côté ouest de la vallée. Euh, du côté est, pardon, de la vallée. Donc, son flanc est éclairé une, uniquement assez tard dans la journée. Euh, ça peut aussi vouloir dire le Aram Mauro, qui est le, le long chemin, la longue route. Euh, en tous les cas, ce marais est positionné selon donc, la position du soleil. Et il fait face directement au soleil à l'équinoxe. Donc, c'est quelque chose qu'on a découvert il y a, il y a assez peu. Hein. Ouais. So, um, of course, translating to um, what we have seen, of course, you saw the site the archaeological site, as we called um, Ibiro to Umaru. This is the Mara that Papa had mentioned earlier. And it's, of course, uh, according to the studies of archaeolog archaeologist Mark Eddowes, um, this particular type of archaeology, I guess you could see, um, site is from Huahine, inspired by the Huahine Mara that you would find there. Okay, so that's one, of course, one of the clues that needed to find out a bit more about it. And of course, it, it was built at the base of a mountain called Aram Mauro. So right behind, as you can see, as you, as you go up, you're going up towards the east. And you have this, this mountain, and it's called Aram Mauro. And so it's two significance to, to the meaning, of course. Aram Mauro means the, the long path, but it also means getting up late. And when you are, of course, in this area, rises above this mountain quite late in the day. And so in a sense, giving that, I guess you could say, um, a meaning to it, of course, giving this Mara meaning in regards to the mountain, but it also, it's actually aligned with the sun. And in this particular day and this ceremony that you see here, we are on what we call in Tahitian Rahiti. This is the day of equinox, which is the 25th of September. And of course we notice the sun rising above Aramauru, but straight, straight, I guess you could say, aligned with the Mara. And of course, Papa is gonna, Explain even more. Okay. Mm. 
Noria, te prono te te tomore i ta tu ni te prono matari to a no te me ai ro te fan ho a e i a i te te tau rahi ti e hu mai te mawari o i i te ri te me ra te faini ni e amatana te chu e mo pra a noria e re me me ro e me ta te mo tau a e ro e no ara no te fatura e no ta man ora e ro e to te te tamatu mo pra uro a tas o o matamu mana o not fine ni ra ya matar i trata i mera ke papure tatu we wa matama to it fine ni ana i tama mo amare tama to ara ti tino not fine ni te hau not me mutara te vera ho ate tau no te hau ya piri mai ho te tau a hume te mera te ara papu ho e me tu pe we na ho a hine Wait it out of the theatre, he who he need vain or a vain or maya or tane. A day theatre to the period of weather to eat you away the time of tap off if I to make a terra to a temana oveda a Wahamata to it for a matari, not me a matari who and not tame a namura, a very more who pay to the matari matari inia, mais for savoir que. Quelques mois avant, donc durant l'équinoxe de septembre, nous avons ce qu'on qu appelle euh, le Vare Amare, donc une période où euh, les Arieux revenaient et, et donc se préparaient, préparaient les marais. Et donc c'était le moment où les gens, la population, euh, nettoyait les marais, nettoyait chez eux, mais aussi euh, se préparait spirituellement et physiquement à l'approche justement de Matarinia et de ce temps, cette période d'abondance. Et de paix. Et de paix, bien sûr. Et de paix. Euh, ce qui est important de noter, c'est que justement, Matarinia n'est pas uniquement euh, une date euh, que l'on célèbre, mais avant cela, et bien sûr, après, euh, ça rentre dans un cycle, euh, et tout à l'heure, on expliquera un peu plus en détail. Euh, Tantôt aussi expliquer que ce marais, du coup, euh, est, est sûrement lié à Huahine, euh, parce que Huahine est aussi une île où le dieu Tane est donc le, le dieu le plus important euh, là-bas. Okay. So um, as Papa Hipara had mentioned, um, of course, this presentation is, is to talk about Matari'i, in essence, what it means. But having this particular location being presented first makes you understand that before Matari'i arrives, which is uh, the 20th of November, in September, this is the um, Rahiti, of course, is equinox, and it, we call it Vaira'a Mara, which means, Vaira'a Mara, which means to, to cleanse, to cleanse the Mara'a, so um, the clan of the Ari'e, which is a specific, uh, I guess you could say, called group that is responsible for the festivities and ceremonies on, on the Marae, they are the ones that come to the matter to clean it. But not only to clean the Marae, but also to clean their bodies and their spirituality, to make sure that they are ready for the time of abundance, the period of abundance and peace. And then, of course, the process, because it's a cyclic process, so first you have by uh, Mara, and then you have Matari Inia. And of course, this Mara in particular, which is Ibirao to Umaril, as mentioned before, the archaeologists had said this is a uh, Huahine inspired archaeological site or construction, which also means that Huahine, in essence, Tane, the god Tane or Kane in Hawaiian, is the most prevalent and important god of Huahine. So this makes us believe that this particular mara also could be dedicated to Tani. Hmm? Okay, so we can go to the next slide. Yeah. Oh. Really interesting. Thank you. Hey, itra ho amu mana itu kubanya te tei mo urua. I mean, tata to itera. Ewe a to a pai mo wahi a to ai to ite mo ana nui. Te wai ra ho a te tei mo. Okay. We can go to the next slide and we'll, we'll explain everything together. We so this the, is the Tahu that we're showing here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we'll, we'll explain everything together because we'll see it again. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they go back, go back yeah. or we're the yes. same place, we're the same exact location, no? Exactly. 
Mm -hmm. Mau. <laughs> oh no no no! Come back! Come back! Come back! Come back. Yeah. One back. This one. Yeah, yeah. One back. Uh, one back. Yeah. This uh, one. Okay. Where am I moving? Okay. Me in your tattoo to wear the tattoo on my arm, no? Yeah. Or if you're out of my room, the tattoo is there. The the tamo here, the fatia here, the tuhiti here, the teun. Oh no, oh yeah, oh yeah, how it is. Ho ho, not to wear any, uh, who are any manu, eh, they ever have or raho a manu manu, a pity, a pity, fantara, ah, only a manu. Ero to it fan or a haru. It rather tell not me a fat pity, a huma pap hamotiki or tene, or a momato de moon, not her de moon. A tailor. Yaho in no amato in the eight mora. A pity at time is not his. Nor yet the emo nuim, no he I get tanu yarato in eight mo mora. The very at a time, the tau, if at ya hiratu. The tau yo matar in Yahare oto narto it if our popen o ye it oto it. If I te made a hate tau. Matari ini ama emel tatu, atai. Eh, ya tatu tau matari iraro. Efa atau tu hiaratu. Nanti ya, nanti mea. Ya, ya hiu tatu. Eriro teri ame happy ana tatu. Eh, inoya tatu ini itu mera. Ya, way inoya. Tei or atau ya hit. Te tei mau nu. Ya tae te tau matari, ai te matoe, ai te oe hap i rei o tau, e tau te rae pihi ai mo te mo tupuna, te mo atua. Ya hare mei, no te mea, wa ahunei te whenua, wa hau te whenua, wa vaia te whenua. Hare mei, hare mei rotoi te mo o, no te mea, nen he whari i aratu. Te i e ma unu, tau tau i tera, e taura tera, taura tera e tamura i au, e tō umau tūpuna e tō umau atua. Taurai hapi i rai au, hapi mei au e te papa ta au papara. Whāro o tō i trahi mene ara koe hona ira, te pīra, te taurai a ia tāne e, tau turuma e nai au chapi, tau ofo feti. E, pae o tra i o, te maura. Donc, on se trouve toujours sur la photo que nous voyons, on est toujours sur le Marai Virato Maru, où on a une planche en bois sculpté qui s'appelle un onou. Celui-ci en particulier représente les oiseaux de manière générale. Alors les onou, c'était des planches de bois qu'on trouvait sur les marais qui étaient laissées là tout le temps. Mais Haruru, il y a 15 ans, a décidé de, de, de refaire vivre ces traditions et cette pratique, de remettre le onou donc, une semaine avant. Donc, Matarinia, on a, on a ce qu'on appelle le Tuhitir Aounou, où on les replace, on les remet sur la, leur marais à leur socle. Et, et cela, Matari Iraro. Um, alors, pourquoi C'était justement pour être sûr que euh, l'on retournerait au marais au moins deux fois dans l'année. Donc, une fois à Matarinia, une fois à Matari Iraro. Euh, C'est important parce que ces Aounou représentent alors, soit des animaux, des éléments naturels, ou alors des dieux. Mais c'est aussi un moyen pour nous de tracer notre généalogie euh, selon nos, nos liens, justement, à ces, à ces animaux gardiens, à ces taura. Euh, et durant Matari Inia, c'est aussi euh, des promontoires pour accueillir nos ancêtres, euh, les dieux, euh, pendant cette période d'abondance, mais cette période de paix aussi. Euh, on, on les invite à revenir parmi nous pendant cette, euh, cette saison. Euh, voilà, je pense que j'ai résumé mm -hmm. un peu. Okay. So, once again, we're going to. We're, we're trying to, as much as we can to, to summarize uh, the great knowledge that Papa had shared. Of course, the, the images, the last two images you saw of, is the same area. We saw the Ahu where we give the offerings when they come to visit the Marai. And this right next to the Ahu is, is what you call a Unu, which is a sculpted um, piece of wood, as you can see. And it's dressed upon the Marai, in the Marai, in the area, of course. And so the Unu, in a sense, is, is a way, it's a marker, I guess you could say, or a symbol, a strong symbol to, to remind us of the cycle of life. In a sense. So um, Haururu, the nonprofit organization, had decided to, every, um, to have this placed uh, the weekend before Matari Inia. 
So once again, Matari Inia, of course, is the new year, and this is when we are preparing the Marat to, to host our ancestors, to host our deities, to host those, uh, the king, of course, in, in the past, or the Ari. And this symbols, of course, uh, gives us a chance to not only um, remember who, what our genealogy is, but the importance of these symbols or these gods or these elements that could be represented on top of these unu or these um, sculpture, uh, sculptured pieces of wood. And so um, understanding that, of course, brings us back to the Mara twice a year. So the first, um, uh, right before Matari Inia, we come in and uh, we plant, as you can see, we tunu it, we plant it here, and they, are stay, they stay on the Mara for six months. And then at Matari Iraru, which is the, the, um, the, the beginning of the period of restrictions, then all of these um, unu, and there's several of them in their different sites, are taken down and are, are rested for a whole year. So once again, understanding the cycle of life, cycle of the earth, cycle of the ocean. And of course, the bird, in a sense, the symbol, as I mentioned earlier, um, choosing this because of all the people that would come and visit, but understanding today that the bird, of course, of, of um, the, the, the Tani Atua is also representative and that is something he had mentioned that they didn't know of all the Unu, which one to choose. They chose this one. Yeah. And, then, and now it makes so much more sense as we're gathering more information. So our, in essence, our ancestors are actually helping us understand these particular sites. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we can move forward now. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to explain it real quick. Je vais juste expliquer encore ça. C'est um, Lord de Rahiti, uh, uh, les membres de l'association de Haururu, ainsi que uh, l'archéologue Mark Eddowes avec mm. son équipe. Et bien sûr, nous avons bien sûr fait la cérémonie uh, de, de Rahiti. Hein? So this is a, at uh, Equinox, of course, um, with the presence of the archaeologist Mark Eddowes, who had been studying this. And as you can see, um, the, the platform that we are standing on, this was, of course, refurbished. Hein? Alors, ça, c'était encore de, vous voyez le, la plateforme de pierre que, où se tient l'association et l'archéologue, mais ça, ça a été restauré par l'archéologue. Et bien sûr, nous étions là pour également regarder le... afin de bien sûr bien comprendre que le marin est effect, effectivement aligné avec le soleil lors de l'équinox. OK, so... Yeah. And this is something, of course, um, we wanted also to, to be present to see if the sun actually rises above in the location and where how you can understand that this mara is aligned to the sun on the day where the day is equal to the night, which is uh, equinox. Hey, voilà. Donc, c'est une, une action qui est euh, on est en perpétuelle recherche à Roulou depuis donc, plus de 20 ans aujourd'hui. Euh, 25. 25 ans aujourd'hui, oui. Ça fait, ça fait longtemps. Ouais. <rire> Et euh, souvent, donc, euh, fait des trouvailles avec des, des, notamment grâce aux, aux discussions et là euh, à, à l'équinox lors de l'équinox euh, avec les échanges euh, que nous avons eu avec Marc Edos l'archéologue euh, nous avons pu découvrir alors que, que ce marais était sûrement dédié à Tahane et c'est peut-être pas un hasard que le haut ou le haut blanc que nous avons vu au début et mm -hmm. euh, eh bien niche dans, dans ces parages là oh, okay. So um, just once again, explaining that um, the, the purpose of, of this image and understanding and acknowledging the archeologist, uh, Mark Eros, who had shared um, his findings. And of course, um, Haururu, the last 25 years, being the caretakers of the valley, trying to understand the sites, the archeological sites, the different maraya, um, working closely with the archeologist to understand. And as you mentioned, we're not just looking at the physicality of, of an, a site, but also the elements around it. And as uh, as I mentioned, the white bird that you saw at the beginning of our presentation is a symbol and representation of Tani. And that's somebody, um, that's a bird that of course nests, nestles nearby this area. So once again, all these signs pointing to, and of course the archeological site being inspired by, by Huahini Mara. So all of these are bringing them to, to understand, okay, this may be, the Mara of Tane. And that's what we have. Okay, so we can move on. We can move on to the next slide. And um, 
self-explanatory. Yeah. You can see the sun rising above. And as you can see, it's aligned with uh, this marker stone, the middle of the of the, the Ahu of the Mara, which is the, the, the top platform. And as you can see, the sun coming over Aramauro. So once again, this is the, the day of equinox. Alors ça, c'est le jour de, de l'équinox. Et on voit par rapport à cette image, l'alignement, bien sûr, avec euh, le Ahu, avec le chemin hein, du soleil levant au-dessus de la montagne que, a, que nous appelons Aramauro. Et voici, bien sûr, l'image à l'Equinox. So this is, once again, a beautiful image at Equinox. So um, we're going to move on and we're going to be talking about, um, yes, we're going to be talking about the lifting of the Unu and, and the ceremonies um, um, involved right before Matari. And so um, we're going to be showing the film. And uh, voilà, nous allons maintenant regarder le film réalisé par Matari lors de, de, de cette cérémonie uh, juste avant Matari, comme on disait, c'est le lever des Unu. Tuhitira. Le Tuhitira. Ça mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. C'est tout arrivé de soi. to Matahe for that beautiful, beautiful film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because... え、
no hia e te hare ra tātou hia e muri mai i tētou tātou. Ia, ia rō ate ri e a tātou mo mau i a te tei tau, papu i no tātou. E te parautu ara no, te, no tō tātou mo whenu, te i e riro noa nei, no te mea i tā tātou ta au a hau e, e tauwha o te whenu, nā rotu i te, te i mo rawe rai te e tau. Donc, euh, un samedi avant le lever des Pléiades, avant Matarinia, il, il se passe depuis donc, 15 ans, on, on a dit déjà, euh, une cérémonie, le Tuhitil Aounou, où, durant laquelle Haururu et ses membres, pas uniquement ses membres, euh, d'habitude, euh, le public qui est invité, les médias aussi, mais euh, cette année, malheureusement, à cause de la, de la crise sanitaire que nous traversons aujourd'hui, on n'a pas pu le faire. Euh, Onze Ounou euh, sont, sont remis sur les, les marais que Haururu entretient. Euh, un élément incontournable justement de cette cérémonie du Tuhitil Aounou, euh, c'est bien sûr la généalogie, la généalogie de chacun où on invite euh, les, les membres, les participants, ceux, euh, ceux qui, qui viennent justement à, à creuser un peu, à, à, à essayer de rechercher de manière personnelle d'où ils viennent, donc tant au niveau de la généalogie, mais aussi de, au niveau de leurs îles, au niveau de, de, des endroits où ils ont grandi, euh, parce qu'on ne peut pas parler du temps si on ne parle pas de l'espace, bien sûr, de l'espace euh, dans lequel on évolue. Euh, donc Matari Inia, Matari, tout simplement les Pléiades, euh, il faut savoir, un, euh, ce n'est pas tout, les étoiles ne sont pas tout, elles n'ont pas toutes les réponses, euh, si elles ne sont pas attachées euh, au cycle de la vie, au cycle naturel, donc de la mer, de, de nos îles et de nos populations, et, et c'est tout le message et toute la philosophie de Haruru qui est derrière ces cérémonies, mais aussi la généalogie et ses encouragements à, à, à se rappeler d'où on vient, euh, parce que sans cela, en fait, on ne peut pas aller euh, sereinement vers l'avenir. Euh, malheureusement, nos peuples euh, natifs, nos peuples indigènes dans, dans le Pacifique euh, ont, ont vécu cela. Euh, au travers de la colonisation, un calendrier a été imposé à, à tous nos peuples. Euh, et depuis 200, un peu plus de 200 ans, on a tout doucement, ben, on, on s'est perdu. Euh, on n'observe plus justement ce qui se passe autour de nous. Euh, et donc voilà, je vais m'arrêter là et peut-être laisser Johan traduire en anglais. Alors, no, um, what Mathe, of course, um, translating the, the essence of what Papa Tepara had mentioned, yeah? um, this is 15 to 20 years of doing these ceremonies every year, twice a year on these particular, in, in regard, of course, involving the UNU, and of course, one week before Matari'i um, Inia, we have, of course, the, the Tuhiti Ra'a. Um, Unu that you saw the in, on the film that happened on the film in Suxi. So we bless the, um, the Unu in the evening and the very next day we place them on the different mara. And so not only does it signify the, the new year arriving, but it gives a chance also for members and those who do come because everybody's invited. Um, people from the public, um, news, you know, the news, the media and everybody, of course, with the, the COVID-19 happening, of course, um, the we, Not too many people, or we encourage people to do ceremonies on their own. So we had a very small crowd compared to normally what we have. And it was a chance once again to um, not only understand the different, um, I guess you could say the, the animal guardians that each UNU have, or the elements that are represented on each UNU, or the deities or gods that are represented on UNU, um, but also giving you a chance to, do, to, to, to say your genealogy. So uh, again, those who are connected to those particular um, UNU could be also be able to express themselves in, of course, the Tahitian language. And Matari, of course, as you can see in this slide is these, these particular stars that not only Polynesians celebrate or identify it as a very important marker in regards to the seasons, right? Many, many different cultures around the world also regard this Matari as a very strong symbol. For us, it's not only a marker of the cycle of life. Of course, this is changing from the period, I guess, of the dry season to the wet season, the period of restriction to the period of abundance. And um, makes us understand our place in this time, in calendar that's based on this time and space and the earth. So once again, um, reconnecting ourselves to the earth, reconnecting ourselves to the traditions and to the knowledge of our ancestors Um, that is the most important part of these ceremonies is to make sure that everybody who participates already projects throughout the year some of their objectives like a resolution for the new year, but also keeps close to them their knowledge, the knowledge of their ancestors and of course, and who they are.
Okay, we can get to the next slide. Voilà. Je vais juste encore une image pour comprendre que Matari Inia, c'est la période de l'abondance. Et après, c'est le Matari Iraro qui est la période des disettes. So, once again, this is the cycle, a season, a calendar of seasons. So, Matari Inia is around November 20th and mm -hmm. it goes on until May, May 18th. And of course, um, from Matari Iraro to Matari Inia, that's the second season. So, our year is split into two. And so this is what, of course, this image reminds. Hola, encore, uh, just, uh, voilà, par rapport à Matari, il comprend, bien sûr, la période de l'abondance et la période, pour dire, de disette. Peut-être que nous mettons un arbre pour un moment d'arrivée. Nous te mettons un petit tatou, pas à toi, mais il faut un an, il faut faire un tatou, 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 pour un moment d'arrivée. Tenez au matari, étape autre, notre fa tape à te télé à autre de avoir. Ni te y est à ouais, te mo à ouais. Et notre notre mère mite peut ouvrir une autre tu, que t'as eu une autre tu, non y est à ouais. Et t'as tu ouais mana, y t'es tano à. Nori a ouvert ici, que t'as au matari, il y a ouais haut pour un autre à ouais. Eroe me llama tarí, fajan han me llama tarí, e muri me te awe api, pero hi arate awe api, eri na tatu teria, na tupa ta e fenuita, i tireo, iria hamata wahawe, te teio, tan e te awe. Teria, no rio man, no matari, i ne ido e hi a, eh? Okay. All right, so um, can you go to the next slide? And then, of course, um, um, he mata will translate in, in French, and it makes sense with regards to the next two slides, huh? Donc voilà, pour, euh, succinctement, Matari est utilisé donc, dans l'année euh, lors de Matari Inia et Matari Iraro. Il faut bien comprendre, donc, Matari Inia, euh, nous avons donc euh, l'ouverture de la nouvelle saison, de la nouvelle année. Euh, la nouvelle année commence euh, à la première lune après le de Matari euh, lors du coucher du soleil. Donc Tireo, le premier Tireo. Euh, mm. que nous avons appris marque le, la première lune du calendrier lunaire maori euh, alors c'est important parce que euh, si l'on suivait justement les, les lunes les calendriers, le calendrier lunaire uniquement euh, à un moment donné en fait on, on, on se perd c'est à dire que Matari est utilisé pour réajuster ce calendrier lunaire euh, qui est donc euh, qui, les lunes donc, qui sont au nombre de 12 ou de 13 selon les années bien sûr euh, alors, je voulais juste peut-être préciser que Matari mm. il n'y a Bien sûr, c'est l'ouverture du, du, de la saison d'abondance, mais dans beaucoup de livres on, que nous voyons, c'est qu'on a traduit Matari Iraro par le temps du disette, euh, mais c'est un peu, le disette est un, un, un mot un peu fort, mais c'est surtout le, le temps des, des restrictions où on a les, euh, les rahoui qui se remettent en place, qui se remettent en place euh, par, par exemple. Donc, voilà. Ok. So, um, as Papa, if I had mentioned, of course, uh, Matari Inia and Matari Iraro, um, you know, correcting in, in essence is saying, Um, this is the cycle of, of the calendar. You can see the, the through, throughout the calendar year of the Polynesian. It, it is to set the lunar calendar. That is the most important. So when Matari'i rises in the east while the sun sets, this is what we call Matari'i Nia. And the first new moon after, which is called Tireo, yeah, gives us a chance to recalibrate the calendar year of the moon, the moon calendar year. Right. So, so some years will have 12 uh, months, count on lunar months, and some years will have 13 lunar months. And, and so that's the first thing. And then you had mentioned, we say Matari Inia, Matari Iraro, of course, it giving two seasons. And of course, um, uh, I had said the, the in French, uh, the, the period of, uh, I guess you could say, um, non-abundance, right? the opposite of abundance, but more so um, the period of restrictions where the Rahui, or a system of management or resources in, is put into place at Matari Iraro. And so and then you come back after six months in Matarinia, the new year, and the new celebration of, of course, the abundance. There's a lot more rain. There's a lot more things plant um, that are, that are um, actually um, uh, growing from the trees. And of course, um, a lot more abundance and, of course, uh, peace and abundance. So, so that you can make that, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can go, move on to the next slide. And it shows briefly uh, the, the cycle of the moon, right? Moon, moon calendar. And once again, Matarii is a marker to set our our lunar calendar year. Encore une fois, c'est la régulation de l'année lunaire. Ça commence avec Matari, avec la première nouvelle lune, après Matari. So, 
All right. So um, next next slide, we're gonna have our songs. Um, so to celebrate, of course, Matarii, many many songs are shared, and and um, one song our choir is gonna be sharing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, voilà, euh, nous allons bien sûr écouter notre chorale de, de Haururu qui va nous chanter une chanson que nous, que nous chantons lors de la lors de, well, célébration de Matarinia. And, um, and we're all going to go because it's a traditional Jimene Taraba, we call it. Voilà, c'est un Jimene Taraba et que nous allons tous participer. So we'll be listening up, okay? <laughs> such a beautiful song. Hironui, could you tell us what mountain we're looking at here in this slide? Yes, uh, so we, we just listened to many of the, the traditional songs, yeah, um, very important. Tarava, c'est encore une chanson traditionnelle que nous chantons lors des cérémonies. Et là, nous avons bien sûr une image très importante qui, on pourrait dire, uh, signifie un peu le site que nous allons découvrir là. Okay, so this is a mountain range. Of course, it um, identifies with the site the archaeological site that we'll be visiting, of course, understanding. So um, you have in the back, in the back of this mountain range in the front, you have the highest mountain in all of Tahiti, which is called Orohena. Okay, so all at the top. Okay, and then you have another one to the right, it's called Pitohiti. So it seems like Pitohiti is taller, but it's an optical illusion. A lot of derrière, au fond, vous avez la plus haute montagne de, de Tahiti, qui est la montagne de Orohena. Et juste à droite, son image, c'est Pitohiti. Alors, Pitohiti a l'air par cette image d'être plus haut, mais non, Orohena est plus haut. C'est juste une illusion optique. Et juste devant, vous avez cette chaîne. OK, so right in front of us, you can kind of see, like, it's like a chain. You know, it's like a ridge going from a head to a body and to a tail. Hein? Vous avez vu, uh, juste devant la, la plus haute montagne, vous avez... Uh, Voilà, une crête qui se dresse avec, euh, on pourrait dire, une tête, le corps, et juste à la fin, um, une queue. Alors, euh, je vais laisser Tonton un peu expliquer uh, cette image. Ah, 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 he ought to hear at the way to put in it for no. The only Yomato where he hear the Ahune at the Uru. Eh, the hood I may take your hate not to a me. Oh, yeah, he ought to tune about the problem at the Ahio Mato, the Ahubuane. 
tenei tra tra te me a e yo mai te no ria tra himene eh no te proud ai wa ahunet fenua wa ahunet ora te tai voilà, juste pour résumer un peu, la chanson, le Tarawa que nous venons d'entendre euh, est dédiée justement au, à la pêche et au retour des, des poissons, du poisson. Euh, ce qu'il faut savoir, c'est que Matari Inia, donc Matari qui se trouve à l'est, euh, ouvre le temps de l'abondance. L'arbre à pain euh, est, est un symbole d'abondance, mais aussi les, les poissons, notamment les tonidés qui reviennent. Euh, en masse. Et donc, ce, comme beaucoup de chants de Haururu, euh, ce chant-là est un message euh, avant tout, et ce message est celui justement de l'abondance, c'est le temps mm. où les, les poissons reviennent. Yeah. Voilà. So, Papa, um, wanted to, before expanding this picture, wanted to make sure everybody understood the, the song, the rhythmic song that we just heard. It is about Matari Inya and about the abundance of this period. And so, you hear in the song, um, mm. this is mm. where uh, breadfruit is the most mm. abundant in Tahiti. We have a lot of the trees, of course, that produce. They could produce uh, through this season um, close to 100 fruits per tree, which will feed a whole village, just one tree. You know? And of course, the return of, uh, I guess you could say fish or the fishing coming from the, from the deep, so pelagic fish. And this is when the period to go and fish outside and where the fish is most abundant, of course, is it, it, um, um, in, during this period, and of course, song dedicated to Ruahatu Tinira, who is the god of the sea, and of course, thanking for this period of abundance that starts. So now he's going to explain this image, okay? They move at auto itera, they do a bit auto itera. I feel here on the Uruhe, they did auto, they do your mantle, they do auto. They do he, no auto, move away him, a full arrow, not a mea, either or no mind. Il a rono mai tramo tra puta auto itera. E to por apo pe to roto to raro e te vera tra apo po pe pro hiara maroto. Yo to maloko ya, ne? Tra e te na ora to pro we i o te 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 awa o te pere fana ura hi. Na o to tra pro ura o o fenua we hi. Te te me te ra ta to te po har me ai ta to te 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 hi u. O te te ihe, te ihe kata pila pa ya oto. E ida romai, te ida romai o fare hape. O iho i fare hape te fare o te he matou ya te mo te etau. Donc ce que nous voyons, c'est l'image, c'est la photo de d'une chaîne, une petite chaîne de montagnes qui se trouve au milieu de la caldera qui s'appelle Teuruhe. Uru qui veut dire, qui signifie la tête, et He, donc la chenille. He ou Hape, euh, les deux sont synonymes. Euh, C'est un lieu qui est important notamment pour les Hawaïens parce que nous avons retrouvé des histoires qui sont liées à la déesse Pele, à Pere, euh, et au, car au pied de Uru He, la tête de la chenille, se trouve un, une vasque, une cascade, euh, donc la cascade de Maroto, euh, qui, qui est Maloko, donc en Hawaïen, qui, euh, qui, que, que l'on retrouve dans des anciens champs. Voilà, qui sont liés à la, à la DSP. Mm -hmm. Significance, of, of course, this mountain chain, as you can see the head on the top and the, and the body all the way coming towards the, the, the tail end. So this, this um, mountain is called Uruhe. That's this chain. And so Uru means head, as you can see the head right in front of the highest mountain. And of course, the body of the caterpillar, He. And so This particular mountain chain, um, at the base of the tail end, you have the village, as we call Farihe or Farihape, which is the house of the caterpillar. But also what's significant about this site is at the base of the head, you find a waterfall and a sacred pool that we call the uh, waterfall and sacred pool of Maroto. And according to um, chants of, of, of the goddess Pele, Um, she swam and bathed in the sacred pool of Maloko. So this, this is this area, of course, that Papa had mentioned, this is also the birthplace of Pele. And so for those of you who, who, who understand or who know a goddess of fire in Hawaii, uh, she was um, a goddess or she was a very important figure here in the valley of Papino, and more specifically here in the caldera. And uh, where the village of Farihapi. And so 
Uh, we're gonna see now a film um, of in aerial images of this area site. So you'll see the village the archeological site and you'll see the mountain ranges. So you get a better idea of what it is, okay? Voilà, nous allons regarder maintenant un film qui nous montre la région et surtout je ferai rappeler. Et les sites de Excuse, I hit the button too soon. Can you explain in Francais, en français, s'il vous plaît? Ah, for the, what, oh. What you were going to see, yeah. Would you like me to explain, you explain it in French and then I can show it again if you like? Oh, uh, uh, we can move on to the next, um, because uh, the next images will be talking more specifically about the images. Alors, uh, voilà, c'était juste encore, uh, c'était des images uh, pour montrer le site de Farihape et les alentours. Um, les projets qui ont été mis en place, les manifestations qui, sont, qui ont été mises en place, pour vous donner une idée que ce village de Farihape est un village, un site archéologique, mais un village, un site qui est vivant, avec beaucoup, beaucoup, uh, qui est vivant, qui est avec beaucoup de, de manifestations, beaucoup d'activités, et bien sûr, un endroit pour accueillir tous ceux qui sont à la recherche, on pourrait dire, des connaissances ancestrales de nos ancêtres. So, once again, I was just mentioning um, these images, of course, showing, showcasing some of the, uh, the ceremonies and some of the activities that we have in this area, what we call Farihape. And uh, of course, um, showcasing that the fact that you, you have a place, uh, I guess you could say, to immerse yourself in the culture, in the language, and of, of course, in, in, in the knowledge that has been gathered for the last few years. And so this is a place we call very, very important for us, Farihape. And the project, is, as you can see in this image, is called Farifuno. Alors voilà, nous avons le projet Farifuno. Notamia, eh, te anirata o elilikala mana o trapa te anida fufaro. Notamia, ito te te tere a mai o hauru mai apiti hauru ma pe ma thai te tene bahau ha e bahau. Vai noa na te ma hapi da ai tere. I tear up in a doctor may it imitated pity to a tiny aroma he took what to put the type of air high. I not mea taking arrow at owner a way they they buy if if an hor anarato aroma to a woman on a foul you tell mom my toy wahi yan in hey. Tomato Motamari. Yan in he ya yatia to yauto, the Varere, waiting out the Varere noir tato. E imia he he wa hoi protonu or a o totato hero. E hitime te opura. E te menaru ha maruru, fatere ho, o te to tomato fenu. Fatere ho, o tiro a tumu noara. Te Turu mai te mai te hupa ia hotu. Te e te e mo tau e muri nei mana o hamata te e mataiti e hara mai nei. E mau te e pū tau e pi 
te pū whāui i tī roa mā ohi. He hā tohu pai i roto i tī e pū. Me mau i a oto ore rā nā mea, oe? He hā tohu pai i tūpū i roto i tī e pū. Te a mau meira mātou tō e whare, ua ua mau, tō e whare rapa au. Te rapa au rā, tō tātou nūn ā ne. E rapa au, i a tara au, nō te whenua. Nō te mea, te tomo rā rā tātou i roto i tī o tō e tau whiwhi mau ā. Hei te pāta tātou rā au papa ae pe e wa ahau. Nō ria waha mata te i ahu pa, e te wahai oa oa roa. E wa āpiti mai te mūpara atā te papa. Te i e oku a rā. E te i e, te i e nei uhare ro te i e ahu pa tu ana rā. E mea mai te i. Te piti o te oku a rā, o ia ia te amau rā te hoe whare eit a upu. E hatara pro whare eit a upu. O ia hae te mai mi rā, te fauwhaao to tātou reo, te fauwhaao te tāo to tātou reo. Ia hi o tātou, kua inoro to tātou reo, tēra amai, tēra amai, tēra amai, tēra amai, haru tātou i toa tārātou, ma te ore e wheruria te weira tātou, e me fauwhaa e tātou. Nō ri e i rotei tei e, tei e wahei, a tei, Hi a te tātei haramai a parau tono reo tumu. I haramai oe riri ka haitu tumai oe parau to oe reo, e parau wau to oe reo, i ria patatu e tāi tatu tantu hiu. Te mau tātato e haramai i au eite parau to rato reo, e parau to rato reo. I a riro te ria mi hapi, i hatato e parau e pau te tau, e pau te wā, mi tātou e parau ra aita, i te e pau, i ria tātou e api e. E nuu amui ai mi. Trai ia te teimana. Trai ia whare ai rā opu, wahamata e tohupa, te tua tāpapa, te imi rā, te heheu rā, te mūpara o paari. Te parau i parahia nā mua mai tēma ai ai te pūpa ai o tātou, i o mātou. Te te toru o te whare e rauhi āra, o i hau te whare āri oi. Te i e pā te whare rai roa, no te mea i o, te mau ohupa, i heheu hia mai nā rotu māne te mea whare ai rā opu e whā ohu pahi ae. Nā te e ho ai e mo whea ori āne, whea orero āne, wārau. I roto rā te api rā ai tate mea me tūru te e paita tātou paraura ki tā e arewa ahau, ai te uturere wha ahau, i tā. E rau e mei, mei te rau hi ara i te rā tau. Are mei rei roto i te whare Nan ao, te i e hamani hi ara, te i e hope a mataiti e oti mai te whare ari oi, e oti to omai te whare nan ao. Nan ao, e rewe to omai mo me prau paari, e hare tātou i roto tioho nuka. Nō reira, te ti to man hini to atu nei mātou i otou, i hare mai i otou, i a aitau i tātou i a prau to tātou, hi roa. I a nene he rā tātou e amui, i a prohi e mai hoa e e nūn a tātou no te moana. E nūn ata tū no te wha, te rā te wha. Te wea tūra, arau eira a te rā mona, o me tūra o tā e parā. Ok, just once again, we're coming towards the end, and so Papa wanted kind of to summarize this whole section, because there's a lot of things, and of course, Matahe is going to translate it in French, and I'll translate it in English, and then of course... Well, no. Yeah, yeah, so that shows all the different slides that are coming up after this, and so we're going to end after we both translate what Papa had said, we're going to sing the last song, ok? Okay, very good. And I, I can show the slides, but we will talk about it at another time. Okay? Voilà, pour résumer un peu, euh, et pour finir aussi notre, notre présentation, euh, Papa Hifala donc, a voulu parler du projet de Fari Fenoua qui, euh, qui, euh, qui portera euh, toutes les ambitions de Haururu, mais toujours dans un, dans une, dans un comment dire, dans une euh, démarche de recherche parce que pendant plus de 25 ans d'existence, Haruru a accumulé énormément de connaissances. Et aujourd'hui, euh, eh bien, Farif et Noa sera la plateforme, un, un lieu d'échange, un centre. Euh, alors, je ne vais pas dire centre culturel parce que ça peut prêter à confusion, mais un centre d'échange, un, un lieu où euh, l'on viendrait, euh, si on, va, on peut dire ça comme ça, euh, pour apprendre, pour approfondir déjà notre langue, le Rio Treiti dans le Farif. Un lieu de Et à Oupou, un lieu de questionnement. Euh, et un lieu d'échange. Le Fari Aupu euh, sera le lieu et le lieu déjà euh, qui, euh, où, où l'on 
déjà où l'on parle nos langues, nos langues autochtones. Donc, les personnes qui, sont, qui, qui se représentent, qui, qui auront un jour la, la chance de participer à, à, aux échanges, aux discussions, sont, seront invitées à parler dans leur langue. Euh, pour approfondir encore une fois le, le Réo, notre Réo, le Réo Tahiti par exemple, qui, qui s'est beaucoup érodé, euh, on utilise euh, plus certains, certains termes que d'autres euh, îles du Pacifique utilisent encore aujourd'hui. Euh, de ce Faré à Aupou, bien sûr, sortiront des, des messages, des concepts, et des réflexions euh, qui seront traduites euh, notamment euh, par des danses, des chants, des horreros. Et à ce moment-là, ce sera euh, l'affaire du Rieuil qui sera euh, gérée, qui sera animée par des, des experts de la, de la danse, de l'expression euh, scénique, euh, expression culturelle, euh, sont bien sûr, euh, en, en se détachant plutôt des instruments modernes comme la guitare et le ukulélé pour re, rentrer encore une fois dans, un, euh, dans une recherche euh, plus approfondie. Euh, il y a aussi le faré Nanan, qui est le faré de la, la maison dédiée à la sculpture. Euh, et euh, j'allais oublier le faré Rapao, qui est la, le lieu dédié à l'échange, mais à l'échange du, du, des, des Rapao, mais de, plus de la médecine intégrative. Donc il s'agit là d'un lieu où on a, euh, et c'est je pense inédit, c'est le, le, le premier, la première fois qu'on voit ça, euh, des personnes, des tradis praticiens et des docteurs en médecine générale, en médecine moderne, euh, qui viennent et qui échangent sur, sur des sujets donc, euh, dans la médecine intégrative. Alors, c'est important de dire parce que ce, ce, ce site de Faré Fénois, de Faré Hapé, est un site vivant. Euh, et, et on veut le faire savoir parce qu'il y a deux ans, deux, trois ans maintenant, en 2017, un projet euh, immobilier, un projet touristique a failli euh, avoir lieu. Et donc, Haruru bah, se lève tout simplement aujourd'hui pour ne pas que ce lieu devienne un lieu uniquement un lieu touristique euh, et où l'on viendrait faire des affaires, voilà. Okay, so once again to sum up um, what Papa had mentioned and and to give out the essence of what this means of Project Fari Fenua, Fari the House Fenua, the House of the Land, and uh, understanding that uh, this project that uh, was proposed because there was a, a risk of this place being taken over by promoters and then to build a tourist site, which after 25 years of the Haruru being, I guess you could say, taking care of the site, um, the project of Farifino came to life. And, and thanking, of course, the part of the government, the Ministry of Culture, supporting the project. And um, to try to bring people together in a, in a sentiment of, of exchange of knowledge. So Haruru has gathered over the last 25 years, extensive amount of knowledge. And um, they want this site to be a place where you can question this knowledge acquired and exchange with Hawaiians like yourself, Lili Kala, as many times you've come over with the Maori and all those who are interested, of course, in, in furthering um, this research of our ancient knowledge before the arrival of the first Europeans. So understanding that, and of course, having the, the language, the native language, the host language be the most important part of this village, meaning um, gathering it and making sure that it, it, it continues to be alive. Um, they've started building first the House of Traditional Medicine, where you have the first House of Traditional Medicine in all of Tahiti, where we have a school of integrative medicine, and where we have traditional practitioners now practicing within the hospital system, and where we train and give seminars to uh, health workers. Then he, um, they built the Fari Aida Upu, dedicated, of course, to the research of ancestral knowledge and, of course, focusing on the language, right? And so these series of webinars, you could see, are part of this project of Fari Aira Upu, as well as other things as well. And, of course, it, it so eloquently mentioned, understanding the, our, our, our stories and our thing and, and transforming them into expression. And that's when now we have the house of Fari Ari, or the house of dance and the house of, of expression on uh, scenic expression, yeah. And so to to now be able to express that when you have different um, dance and understanding that we don't use modern instruments like the guitar or the ukulele or the toire, but go back to how it used to be, a more profound research. And of course, the next project coming out is the house of carving and sculpture. And, uh, and of course, we restored the, the place because we can host people 
there. So all the bungalows and the, and the, the kitchen, everything has been restored within this project. And so this is Farihinoa, it's alive. Um, once uh, this, uh, I guess you could say COVID-19, um, we find a vaccine and, and, and things come down, you guys are more, in, more, more than welcome to be coming down to this area. And of course, this allowed us to do, to do this kind of work on it. And so once again, Papa is extending, uh, um, of course, an invitation to those who want to come and visit as soon as uh, the COVID is, is over. So this concludes. Ah, je voulais juste rajouter mm -hmm. même, que c'est un, un, un projet énorme, euh, peut-être qu'on ne le voit pas bien sur la carte, mais c'est quand même neuf nouveaux forêts et la rénovation de tous les forêts existants euh, qui n'a pas pu se faire sans l'aide du, du gouvernement, bien sûr, qu'on le remercie, et le ministère de la, de la Culture, bien entendu. Euh, ce, cette période du Covid euh, donc, euh, a fait que le, le, le site, tout le site est fermé au public, mais euh, on va dire que c'est peut-être opportun, c'est ce qui permet aussi à Rourou Haruru de, de faire tout ce travail et mm. euh, on espère que bientôt il sera ouvert pour vous accueillir et donc c'est une invitation aussi qui est euh, une, encore une fois qui est étendue à, à tous ceux qui nous regardent ce soir. Okay. No hi mai tato o i hau non i mai te wa te atau rua te atau ati o faru e tato te wa o faru e tato i fan hor ao te wa ya ui o te mo prata mali no hi mai o ai te rato i te de pro mai de pro na tu e nan i mai tato i te wa chara a mai to tato mo tu kuna e hi o no mai. Manawa we teriat por ei ya ho e va ha tato i te nunu a o te moana nui te moana nui o kiva nei te moana nui o hiva nei te moana nui o ate ami trat por ei hei e te e o puara tato i te ra e va ate e e va ate e fan ho hi ara ya far rei tato ya pro hi a ho tato e tato to te moana hi a pro e pro a ho mai po moana nui patitifa e ta e pro tato to te moana nui o patitifa na me ama te dia tato te moana nui ho e na tato nu a api pitina tato ta pri pri va e dia tato e e ora a ho ai te ho e ora a e pro hi a tau e tau te mo te me e vai Yo no, mahala no. Eh me me kai e ho pau ke i manawa ke i ho i ki makolela ho i ya. Lo come a o kauoha o papa hefara o lelo makolelo o kapo e o ka o naku puna makolelo tahiti makolelo ha wai i ya o lelo makolelo a ole makolelo na po e ha ole na ko po e ha po pa a a ole ka a no lela. E ho hano mau ya o e papa hefara mahala nui. No ke ia ho ike, uh, ma hope o ke ia, uh, ma lia paha, iki ke unuhi maka, maka uh, olela ba palani, maka olela haole ke kahi. We just end up, thank you pa so much, Papa Hifara, with inspiring us to speak our own languages. And we absolutely should have Tahitian speaking in Hawaiian, and Hawaiian speaking in Tahitian, al malela. But now we got to have, end up because these people have to get on the road before they get uh, caught by the Jondan uh, Murray. And so we, I let Hiro Dui finish up. Thank you. Voilà, ben, nous arrivons au thème de notre présentation. Encore merci d'avoir regardé. On vous laisse avec ce magnifique chanson que Papa Hipara et Kami ont écrit et bien sûr composé, qui bien sûr parle du va'a, mm -hmm. les valeurs du va'a, et que nous devons revenir à ces valeurs. And so the message that we leave with you is to remember the, the va'a, that's our, that's our origin, that's our story, but the values of the va'a, that's what we must return to. And so this is what the song is about. Mm. Marudu and thank you. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah.
Thank you very much, Ali, everybody. Okay. You folks get on the road. I'll finish up uh, showing some of the slides, OK? okay. Love, love all of you. Love to the choir. Love to oh. my matahi. <laughs> Aloha. And here to Give Papa he farahe. Wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, hug for me, OK? Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Aloha. Okay, folks, we're still going to show a little bit more after they've gone. I want to show you uh, some of the slides they had, a beautiful, that they all, they've been talking about their integrative medicine. And it's too bad that there is a, um, you know, um, it's a time when we can't really see each other, There's a, this pandemic that's on. But I'm hoping that you can see all of the, the wonderful things that they're doing there at, at Maroto, in Papenoo, in Farehape. And this is their last slide. They were going to show what sing for the va'a. This is their their Tahitian uh, va'a for them to be going to see uh, uh, around the world. And they've been to many places all across Polynesia, actually. And so, um, uh, yes. Now, also we have the songs. Uh, Kalani, can you still see my screen? Yeah. Okay, because my screen on my side went, went blank. But here we go. <laughs> Here are the songs for Tane uh, Atua. And so uh, we have them in, in Tahitian, we have them in French and in English, and we can learn these songs from them at another time, perhaps, when we're sharing these things. But the, the song for the Tane Atua is the first song they sang, and then talks about how Tane is uh, showing them how to go from one place to another on the va'a, on the canoe. And then, 
um, this is also showing them the way through the mountain, through the way to understanding the way of the ancestors, uh, that the va'a actually takes us along a journey to show us the, the pathway of our ancestors. And then the second song they sang was for Ruahatu Pinirau, who is their version of Kanaloa. Ruahatu is in charge of the ocean and the fish, Ruahiti Pinirau. And Kimilau in Hawaiian is the name of a shark. And of course, the sharks are children of Kane, oftentimes in the Hawaiian genealogies, just like the volcano clan is, like the Pele is. And so this place is uh, worshiping Kane, uh, who is the uh, father of Pele, and Pele is born there, right? So this is a, this is an, another thing that they're calling out to is Ruahatu, the, uh, who was the god of the ocean, and how he is the one who brings the fish. Now you heard that in this season, the fish in the deep sea will be coming in shore. So there'll be lots of fish in the ocean. There'll be lots of food on the land. The ulu is blooming. There'll be lots of food for people to eat. And so um, they're talking about Ruahatu and how they can go catch the fish. This is one of the things they're going to, to call out for and sing for the time of Makari'i uh, Ni'a and the time of when the Pleiades is rising because that next six months will be a time of abundance in Tahiti. And then they have a, a song that they were doing um, called Koroi. And this is a, I don't think we have the English for this one, I think just the plantation, but that was the one that, excuse me, that Papa um, Hifara um, wrote. And this is the song that they sang wherever they went on the Moana for all the people that they met. The Nuna'a is their word for the people that they met everywhere they went. And they've been singing this song for many, many years through all their voyages on their canoe, the Fa'afa'ite canoe. So I was so happy to have them. Wasn't it beautiful to hear the Tahitian, Papa Hefara speaking Tahitian? I actually could understand quite a lot that he was saying. It was so close to Hawaiian. And I know folks who were uh, Hikike Olelo Hawaii could also pick up a lot too. Very, very close to us. So that's a kind of our winding down. I want to tell you, thank you all for coming. And that, that I want to say, especially Mahalo Nui Loa to Kalani Simeona, who is um, tonight our, our only person on technology. Thank you so much, Kalani, for helping us run this show. But also to our partners on Facebook, Hawaii Nui Akea, Kanai Okana, who provides the Zoom platform for us, OEV TV, who helps get the word out. And actually, I should also add in here, um, CNHA does the same thing. CNHA is helping us get the word out. And I think soon we'll be partnering with Olelo and with, um, with YouTube so that we can have more platforms for people to watch this wonderful knowledge coming from Hawaii and from Polynesia, Moana, Nuiakea, um, all parts. Okay, so uh, here's our evaluation. It's bit.ly Branty Val. If you would like to uh, tell us what you like, perhaps we should be starting at 6.30 if they have a hard time uh, in Tahiti, as long as they're on lockdown, I, I think I'll ask, uh, he don't know if that's possible, so that we can hear everything and not be cut off. I want to also tell you about the Lea Nui Nui that our wonderful friend and mentor, Malia Nobriga Oliveira has, it puts on all the time. She's got, I think, three shows a day. All, all, some of them, all of them about Hawaiian ancestral knowledge. So please go and check it out. And then she's also helping OHA host a lot of webinars on politics. So we need to know about politics, folks, if we're gonna control our land. So mahalo nui for that. If you've enjoyed tonight, here you can send uh, tax deductible donations into the uhfoundation.org Gladys Grant Endowed Chair, or you can co contact me, lilikala at hawaii.edu. Be glad to help you do that. And of course, next week, we're gonna have our own from Hawaii, will be Pualani Lincoln Maiulua uh, Kalamai, who is the Makali'i Voyaging Canoe Navigator. And she's gonna to talk to us about how Hawaiian stars that we've been seeing used for the land are used in the ocean for going back and forth between Hawaii and Tahiti. She also, by the way, got a master's degree in, uh, from Hawaiian studies in 2013, where she wrote her thesis on Papa Mao and all of the knowledge that he's given to us. So she's quite knowledgeable about stars that I'm so glad that she'll be with us next week. Again, same station, maybe 6.30, maybe seven o'clock. We'll have to see about that, but that's December 2nd. We'll send out notices to all of you if we're starting early, we'll let you know ahead of time. 
And I just want to say to you, mahalo nui, aloha no, apo malie ike yapo, aloha.